Hey there, future CNC beginners and hopefuls. Today we're diving into the art of digital design for CNC, starting with a simple but elegant black and white engraving pattern that's perfect for beginners. I'll guide you through creating your very own design step by step so you can start your CNC journey with style and confidence. So let's get right into it. First things first, we need a simple design. Head over to your AI tool of choice and request something like black and white flat design for this one. We'll keep it easy on the eyes and straightforward for engraving. You could try adding in words like symmetrical or swirly to spice it up if you're feeling adventurous. The goal here is to get a design that's striking but uncomplicated. Once you're happy with the design, save it or copy it to your clipboard. Now, let's bring that image into Inkscape to prepare it as an SVG. Paste or import your saved image into Inkscape. Once your image is in, head up to Path and select Trace Bitmap. When the Trace Bitmap panel pops up, click Apply. And hey, if this feels a bit like foreign territory right now, don't sweat it. Inkscape tutorials across YouTube can work wonders in helping you get comfortable with this step. At this point, you should see two images that look nearly identical. One is the original, and the other is our new traced version. Here's a quick pro tip. The traced image is the one with the border that's closest to the edges. So go ahead and delete the other one. Now, select the traced image that's remaining. Hit Control Shift R all together to resize the page to match your design perfectly. This makes it easier to export without extra borders around the image. Finally, save your masterpiece as an SVG file and it's ready for easel. All right, SVG in hand, we're ready for the CNC world. Next, open up the Easel website. If you haven't set up an account yet, go ahead and make one. It's free, and you'll even get 30 days of Easel Pro for that extra kick. Don't worry, I'll keep our design within the free version's capabilities to keep this accessible for everyone. Now that we've created our SVG, it's time to bring it into Easel and set things up for carving. Click on Project, then select Import SVG, and choose your just created design. I'm not sure why it's not showing the menu prompts, so you'll have to trust me until you do it yourself. Next, change your material type and dimensions to match what you'll be using. In this case, I'm working with pine. And now, let's talk bits. Easel Free has a limited selection. So I've chosen the 8th inch bit. It's an upcut in Easel settings, but the bit I'm actually using is a downcut. That's totally okay for now. We'll work around it. Here's where we fine tune the layout. Match the image size to your material, or arrange it to fit where you want it to carve on the wood. Now, let's set the cutting depth. Remember, the deeper the cut, the longer it takes. Since this is a demo, I'm keeping it shallow, just enough to showcase the engraving. You might notice the preview doesn't perfectly match the finer details of your design. That's because our 8th inch bit is too wide to reach those narrow areas, so it skips what can't be done. This is totally normal and something you'll run into often when working with CNC. Consider it a gentle reminder to plan your designs with your bit size in mind. Now let's talk cut settings. Easel automatically sets these for you, but don't trust it completely. It doesn't always know what's best for your machine or bits. Here's where we cheat a little and call in some AI backup. I like using ChatGPT for this. Be specific when asking, something like, what are the optimum RPM speed and feed for an 8th inch downcut bit in pine, including plunge rate? And to keep it clean and simple, ask for a summary table of recommended settings. Why do this? Because understanding speeds, feeds, and chip load is a science that could take hours to explain. AI can help you shortcut to the right numbers while you're learning. Once you've got your cheat sheet from ChatGPT, let's head back to Easel. Under Cut Settings, input the numbers you just got. Don't forget to click Manual at the top. Easel won't let you make changes while it's on automatic. Trust me, I keep trying and it gets me every time. Take a moment to double check everything. Material type, bit selection, cut depth, and now your custom speeds and feeds. These small tweaks make all the difference for a clean, precise cut and maintaining your bits. And now the moment of truth creating the file that will bring your design to life on the CNC. Click Project, then download G-Code. This is the file your machine will use to run the job. 
With this step, we're officially ready to move from the virtual world into the workshop. It's time to bring our design to life. Place your material, pine in my case, onto the spoil board of your CNC. Take a moment to ensure it's square to the machine. Trust me, precision starts here. Now lock it down with the hold down clamps, but double check that the clamps aren't in the tool path because the last thing we want is for the CNC to crash into them. A broken bit makes for a really bad day. Next, power on your CNC and connect it to your computer via USB. Open up the candle software. If you're using an offline controller, well, I can't help you there, but I'd love to learn about it later. Now, jog the spindle to the bottom left corner of your material. This is the origin point automatically set in easel. Use the controls in candle to move the spindle. Jog the bit closer to the material and grab a piece of paper. Slowly lower the bit using smaller jog steps as you go. When the paper barely slides under the bit, you're ready. This is your perfect zero point for the X, Y, and Z axes. Set those zeros in candle. Oh, and if you're like me, this is the part where you realize you forgot to open your G-code project. No problem. Open it now and you'll see the tool paths appear in candle's top pane. Finally, jog the spindle up again for safety. Turn the spindle on, don your safety glasses, and let's hit send. And just like that, the CNC is off and running. I've sped this part up for you, but this is where the magic happens. Precision carving, layer by layer, as your design comes to life. As the CNC does its thing, let's talk about what you're seeing in Candle. Those black lines, that's what still needs to be removed. The blue line being drawn in real time, that's data actively sent from Candle to your CNC. The orange bit, that's the spindle's live position on the material. And finally, the gray lines, those are my favorite. They show what's complete. It's like watching progress in real time. Kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? When the job's done, safety first. Turn the spindle off before you do anything else. Always make this your first step. It's a habit worth having. Now, jog the Z axis up and move the spindle out of the way. In Candle, click Abort to reset everything. And just like that, you're done. Carefully remove your material and take a moment to admire your creation. It's okay, go ahead. Happy dances are totally allowed. In the next video, we'll take your project to the next level with some creative finishing touches to really make it pop. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. Until then, keep creating and let the CNC inspire you.